Hi everyone, welcome to Nareesh IT. This is Sai. So in the last discussion we seen about what are the core components of JDBC that is JDBC API and JDBC driver and in this session we are going to focus about JDBC driver manager and the second component that is JDBC test suite and what is the use of these two components we will see now. JDBC driver manager is used for collecting some group of drivers either statically or dynamically. So among the group of drivers we can select one of the driver dynamically for communicating with the target database actually. So JDBC driver manager is generally for performing the core level operations that is it acts as a data structure for collecting some group of drivers either statically or dynamically. If you see in this scenario here from this diagram what you can understand your Java application uses JDBC library for communicating with a driver either JDBC driver 1 or driver 2, driver 3, some drivers, let us assume. Now, let us say an example I am using with the JDBC driver 1 actually, I am working with JDBC driver 1. Suppose in future if you want to work with JDBC driver 2 or driver 3, whatever it may be. So, in that scenario, what we are doing means we are going to collect all the group of drivers information dynamically to connect with target database actually here. That means your driver manager is just uh, acts as a data structure for collecting a group of drivers either statically or dynamically. So, you can see here driver manager is our data structure you can say here exactly. So, in this driver manager what we are doing means we are going to register your JDBC drivers what we are using actually. You can register some set of drivers that can be a type 1 based driver or type 2 based driver or type 3 or type 4 based any type of JDBC driver. So, the point is very clear here. It acts as a data structure for collecting some group of JDBC drivers actually. So, from this you can select one of the driver dynamically for connecting with your target database. Let us say X driver is stored in the 0th index, X driver is stored in the 0th index position and Y driver is stored in the index position 1, Z driver is stored in the index position 2. Like that we have some set of drivers actually. So, among the group of uh, drivers, the list of drivers, if we can select one of the driver dynamically for connecting with target database actually. So, our driver manager internally uses a vector collection for storing all this group of drivers actually. From this vector collection only, we are going to select one of the driver dynamically for connecting with target database. That means, if you see the front part layer here, what the Java application will do here, see, you can understand from here. My Java application uses JDBC library as usually, JDBC API. Our Java application uses JDBC API for selecting one of the driver actually. Our Java application uses JDBC API for selecting one of the driver from the driver manager actually. That can be type 1 driver or type 2. What are the drivers we registered inside a driver manager? We are going to select one of the driver. So, that driver, that selected driver dynamically connects with your target database actually. So, what is an advantage in this approach? 
in this approach we are going to decide a driver dynamically instead of statically. There are two ways, there are two ways for connecting with database. By using driver directly you can connect with the database. In that scenario there is no involvement of driver manager. But what is the problem in that approach is your application become driver dependent. In future if you want to change the driver again you need to modify your application. But in this approach we can register n number of JDBC drivers inside a driver manager. From that we can select one of the driver dynamically for connecting with target database actually. So, this is about the core level operation what we need to understand. So, advantage is driver independent right now in this approach. So, in future if you want to work with some other driver or if you want to remove any existing driver. So, there is no problem directly you can deal with driver manager no need to modify your application. What your Java application is doing right now? Your Java application take the help of JDBC API to communicate with driver manager for selecting one of the driver dynamically. So, what happens in this scenario? Our driver manager completely provides an abstraction between your database and your drivers actually. So, you can register any type of driver inside a driver manager and you can select the driver dynamically to connect with your target database that is a scenario what we need to understand actually here. So, this is what about exactly the core level operations what we need to work with a driver manager. So, finally, what is the conclusion is in our JDBC programming there are two ways for hitting with a database actually. One by using driver directly you can connect with database or with the help of driver manager. Indirectly we can select a driver we can connect with target database actually. So, these are the core level operations what we need to understand actually with driver manager. So, we will discuss more points about the driver manager in our coming sessions clearly. Then coming to the fourth component JDBC test suite. So, what is JDBC test suite here is JDBC test suite is a JDBC a test component that is testing how the JDBC driver is working means what type of features are supported by the JDBC driver. So, for testing the JDBC driver for that purpose only we are using this component before using the driver in the our programming in our projects actually. First of all as a programmer or your team leader will test the driver how it is working means what type of features supported by the driver you can test that also we will see in our coming sessions very clearly how to test the JDBC driver ok. So, these are the just a core level component just to understand actually how to communicate with the database for the understanding point of view just a given the broad view about this JDBC core components actually. So, finally, what is the conclusion about this core component? JDBC API is a set of the two packages java.sql, javax.sql packages. These two packages are located inside rt.jar file which is located inside jre slash lib folder. JDBC driver is a heart of JDBC it acts as a mediator between our Java application and the database. JDBC driver is responsible to convert your Java calls into database calls as well as database calls are converted back into Java calls. So, who communicates with the JDBC driver means our JDBC API. Our Java application take the help of JDBC API to communicate with this JDBC driver 
and the JDBC driver is responsible to communicate with database. Currently in our market there was more than 220 drivers which are available. Some of the drivers follow some architectures. Architectures are four types the standard driver architectures which were given from the Sun Microsystems. So, these four architectures are in the different different ways each every architecture is having the benefits and drawbacks. As I told you that type 1 and type 2 driver architectures are not using in our project development is a very rare scenarios. Type 3 and type 4 architectures we are using in our project development actually. We will discuss about each and every architecture clearly in the coming sessions. And uh, who provide the implementation part for this JDBC API means java.sql, javax.sql that will be taken care of from your driver vendor actually. Our driver vendor will do that for you. So, what is JDBC driver manager actually? JDBC driver manager it acts like a data structure for collecting some group of drivers either statically or dynamically. So, in that data structure that means uh, our driver manager internally uses a vector collection for collecting your group of drivers information. So, from that you can register a driver, you can deregister a driver, you can do all these things with the help of driver manager. So, by using driver manager you can make your Java application as driver independent application. So, in future if any driver is changed no need to modify your application ok. JDBC test suite is just for testing your JDBC driver how it is working whether the functionalities what type of functionalities of the JDBC driver whether the features are supported or not for that purpose we are working with that component JDBC test suite actually here. We will discuss how to test the JDBC driver and all these things very clearly to understand about the points ok. So, these are the core level components first what we need to understand about JDBC core library actually. Now coming to the part in this session we are just uh, going to discuss about one of the important part that is what is this type 1 driver architecture. We will see about these things more clearly today. Today I am not explaining about the internal flow of the architecture that internal flow we will see in the coming next session. Just for understanding sake I am going to tell some of the few points about this type 1 driver architecture. So, in this architecture according to this architecture standard any driver vendor means any external company must use the two types of languages a Java language and native language that can be C or C++. This type of driver cannot connect with database directly. They must take the help of some third party driver. So, these drivers acts as a bridge between your third party driver and your Java application. That is why this architecture is a bridge driver actually. This type 1 driver architecture is having a another name called bridge driver. Why we are saying that as bridge driver means it acts as a gateway between your Java application and third party driver. So, third party drivers are provided by your database vendors only. Suppose if I install Oracle database, Oracle database is having its own driver, third party that meaning here. So, type 1 driver architecture is having some standards. What are the standards we discussed up to now? This type of driver partly implemented on Java, partly implemented on native language. This type of driver cannot connect with database directly it must take the help of your third party driver. So, that third party driver is responsible to connect with your target database actually. So, these are the core level operations first what you need to understand about the type 1 driver architecture. 
So, this is about the scenario to understand actually here to uh, and in the next coming session we will see how to work with this type 1 driver architecture the internal flow we will see in the next coming session and what are the benefits and drawbacks of this architecture we will see in the next session. Thanks for watching the session. <laughs>